Previously, in unboxing episode 7, it was highly requested I get a box cutter. So I did just that and unboxed it on camera and jumped into 15 reptiles. However, this episode became way too long because there were 30 total, so I decided to cut it into two parts, part two being episode eight, which is the one that you're on right now. If you want to see the first half of this shipment, you can check out episode seven, but either way, here is episode eight slash part two. Next up from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Perfection. Every time. Sorry in advance for all the dog fur. Hi Alex, thank you for taking in my rescues. I loved having these, but now it's difficult to get feeders. I knew it was time to give them to a home where they deserve to be in retirement. Thanks again. So these three geckos were actually originally four and they got them from uh, their co-worker's child. One of them they said was just too unhealthy to ship. So they sent me the three others because they just couldn't keep them long term. And that's pretty common with animals. They get stuck with one person and then they get stuck with another person who got them stuck with that person and then they come to me. And then I give them to someone else who hopefully will be the final home. But inevitably, they can go through a lot of homes. So let's check them out. This one's got a regrown tail it looks like. And it's a female. Finally, some leopard geckos. I've been waiting. It looks a little bit skinny, but not too bad. This one looks even better. And actually, I don't know, it's a bit skinnier. <laughs> if any walk off the table, they're going in timeout. I also forgot to mention, they are all kept together in the same enclosure, uh, four total. And this one is really skinny, actually, pretty bad. It sounds like it's just because they weren't being fed enough but it could always be something like parasites, which is somewhat calm. Please get away from, oh God, I forgot to move this. Parasites are oddly common in leopard geckos. I don't know why, because pretty much any reputable insect seller is not gonna give them parasites. So unless you're catching your bugs outside or using a really sketchy seller, they really shouldn't have parasites, but luckily it is treatable. Most likely these do not have parasites, but I'll know the best within a few weeks to see if they gain weight or not. And if they don't, I can get them tested. And I just completely mixed up all of their all of their tubs. I don't know which one is Charlie, Echo, and Blue. So um, I'm just gonna magically change their names. On the bright side, females being kept together, although I would definitely not do it, at least will go probably a bit better than males being kept together. Them and their testosterone. I don't know if geckos have testosterone. <laughs> I saw nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. There is actually a lot of dog here. If, if anyone ever sends me a dog, I'm sending it straight back. Mm. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're halfway there. <laughs> this one has very colorful packaging. So this is coming from California and I already tried to find the email, but I literally can't find this order. I think I accidentally deleted the thread. So I have no context. <laughs> It's a little corn snake. I'll be honest, a lot of these species are not very interesting, but the individuals still have been. It's got these super dark reds, and that's kind of all that stands out about it. It looks great though. It's also quite warm because the heat pack fell on it. <laughs> we need to figure out something with that. There needs to be some sort of like heat pack holder or something, because as well as people tape them, they do not stay. Very active, its tongue is flicking like crazy. It's having like a, its tongue is like break dancing all over my arm. It's moving so quickly. And I'd say that's a good sign. It's very active and alert, wants to know what's going on and wants to get out of here and just go probably hide forever and maybe eat occasionally. It is pretty weird to think that most of these animals have traveled further than I probably ever will. It's also funny how they kind of come to their hometown. Like maybe you go visit the country that you're your family was born in because corn snakes are from North Carolina and this one was in California which is where corn snakes are not and it's back that doesn't make any sense but before we continue I want to tell you about the unboxing plush first of all unboxing videos are not the cheapest to make I love doing them and I want to continue and if you want to help me with that you can do so by ordering but you'll also get a squishy soft and fudgy plush that I'm really happy with I've wanted to make any sort of plush since I was like five years old and the day has finally come thanks to your support on the videos. Uh, this is a limited edition run and there's gonna be 500 made and once they're gone, uh, they're never coming back. But if they sell out, I will definitely be making 
future designs that uh, I think you'll like. You've given me some great ideas. I've also opened up shipping to Australia, uh, which I was not sure if I could do before, but I can ship to most countries. And uh, obviously the US is the cheapest, but it's still an option. Unlike the reptiles, which I can only ship within the US. So uh, no reptiles inside this one, or maybe you can cut it open and find, there's no reptiles inside, don't, don't cut it open. <laughs> So check out goherbie.com if you want to grab one or two or three. I don't know why you would want three. And we're back. I realize my hair looks a little crazy. Should I cut it? I'll just, <laughs> just give it a little snip. It's so dull. Can someone sharpen my katana, please? Ooh, that's a lot of text. Hello, I'd just like to thank you for offering your realm service. I've done the best I could, but with an increased workload and newly went back to school, I've been able to keep up with the financial information for me and my family's bearded dragon. Ooh, a new species. We haven't gotten any bearded dragons today. His name is Arthur. He has an amazing personality. I'll be the judge of that. Very chill, but does like to run around and explore outside. I should probably move my box cut of him. He does not have any sense of self-preservation. Especially unaware that he does in fact take fall damage, so someone should probably keep an eye out and be prepared to decide. Whoop. Oh, that was his mouth. <laughs> he especially likes parsley and chopped up green beans in the salad. I have neither of those, but I'll try to remember to get some. And he's coming from Florida. We got a Florida man on our hands. Arthur, come on, Arthur. Ooh, hello. You're orange. Wow. Well, a little bit more unique than the average bearded dragon with its kind of pale yellows. This one's a pretty bright orange. He's looking good. Something about bearded dragon owners always seem to make them either overweight or underweight, but he looks to be a nice healthy in between. I can't see his skeleton, but I can still feel it, which I would say is kind of right where you want it. He's got a little stuck shed on his lip. If I don't even know if they're called lips. Let's see if he lets me get it. I love when previous keepers leave the shed on for me. Okay, he doesn't care. Sometimes when I'm doing that, with like a split second, they just go on and then just swallow your finger. Yeah, he's bright, he's chill. Sometimes you know how people are like, oh, my child's the sweetest child ever. And then the child like throws a baseball at you. This owner was actually self-aware and seems to actually know the personality. He seems pretty friendly, pretty energetic, and so far has not fallen off the table. Oh, he knows. Oh, no, there he goes. I had to test. Mm -mm. This one's coming from Alabama. Sorry. Also, Patreon supporters can now actually buy animals before anyone else. So if you, where's the top piece of Oh, did I forget to send you the top piece of foam? Um, but yeah, you can pre-order animals, uh, so you get first pick. Also, I have a kind of like special podcast I do where I just talk about whatever you want on Patreon, and you can talk to me directly, so yeah, it's kind of cool. What's not cool is that this is another corn snake, which is like the fifth in this video. <laughs> However, <laughs> whoa. Okay, I said the other one was red. This one is insanely red. So it's an albino something, did they tell me? There was no information, nor was there a top piece of styrofoam. So this one was given to the person by someone else, which is also very common. Uh, and then they just didn't want it. So now it's here, not complaining. It's actually very pretty. I don't know why I'm on the table. This is the one that uh, the, the guy that sent the, the hog island boa. What was it? Hog? Yeah. Well, we saw sad crusty before. This one is happy crusty. Also poopy crusty, but that's okay. Happy and poopy is better than sad and no poopy. Oh, all right, come here, come on. That was a flaccid jump. <laughs> He's like borderline overweight. He's just kind of chubby, <laughs> but oh, <laughs> come on, do a cool jump, do a flip. Come on, do it for the camera. Oh wait, is this the hundredth? Let's see. Five, six. This is, this is the 100th animal I've unboxed on camera. And all these animals together equal over 600 that Emerald Scales has taken in and well, haven't sold these yet, but will sell total. That's pretty cool. Thanks to the over 500 of you that have purchased and the millions of you that have watched these 100 
be unboxed and I just butchered that sentence. So it's pretty meat, pretty meat. That is pretty meat, boys. Thanks to the over 500 of you, thanks to the over 500 of you that have, thanks to the over 500 of you that have purchased animals and um, the well, millions of you that have watched me unbox these 100. I cut the table with the box cutter. Hold on, let me fix that. Okay. Got it. And now animal 100 and one on camera. Still special, but not as special. Did you hear that? What am I about to open? It's so small, it sounded so much bigger than that. Coming from New York, wow, so many New Yorkers, is an animal they got from their neighbor who was moving and couldn't bring it. And now they're moving and couldn't bring it because they didn't have enough space in their new home for the enclosure. Moving is, yeah, basically if, if you plan to have landlords in the future, you're taking a risk by uh, purchasing an animal. Some landlords are lenient, other people just lie to their landlords. I've had both experiences. <laughs> It's so small, it's huff sounded so big. It'll still kind of hurt if it bites, so let's just do this. <laughs> it's cute, it's a Nicaraguan, 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 what? Nic, Nicaraguan, Nic, I've never said that word before. Nicaraguan, Nicar Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan, what? I can't get it out. Araguan, Araguan, Araguan. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Why did I jump at that? He's so small. He looks perfect. The nice thing about uh, him huffing is it's easy to tell if he has a wheeze or not, and he does not. Uh, he's a perfect weight. Sometimes people feed boas a bit too much because they expect them to get to that ball python girth, but they're supposed to be a bit more rectangular, which you would not want to see in a, I've never seen a rectangular ball python, but I don't know what I'm saying. He's healthy. He's just very grumpy. Maybe he's just grumpy because he's been through so many homes, who knows? But I mean, most of these animals have been through at least four because it'll be the person that bred it or caught it if it's wild caught, then the person that bought it, then it always ends up to a second person, and then it ends up with me, and then it ends up with the person I send it to. Reptiles are just in a constant state of being rehomed, it seems. It's kind of depressing. You know, holding this bag really doesn't save me at all if he bites me. It's not like it's a big deal. I just don't feel like getting bit, okay? Is that too much to say? And now he's, oh, I think he's okay. He's very soft. The cool thing about snakes that get bigger while they're small is their scales feel like very, very soft and cute, cute, cute and cool, cute. Four boxes remain. Got a big one and three, four mediums. I mean, five box, wait, what did I say? Okay, I don't know why I sent such a big box for this. I don't think I meant to. I think I sent, it says there's a king snake in this, but this is a huge box. I don't send boxes this big for king snakes. And as a child, if you told me I would someday be unboxing 30 reptiles in one day, I used to look forward for years to get one reptile. If I knew how many people would send me in my adulthood, I would be shaking in my boots in a good way. I'd be jumping in my boots. I'd be jumping in my, yeah. And then if he saw me do this, he would be like, what happened? Coming all the way from not very far, New Jersey. Uh, this person had a kind of job situation change. Sometimes that means financially they're making less. Other times that means that they're working too much and don't really have the time. I think I sent them the wrong box because I sent them two bags as well. You tie a mean knot. And let's see, why did I send them such a small box? Whoa, 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 whoa. what is this? I know it's a king snake, but what is, what? I don't remember seeing this picture. I, when I'm doing the unboxing video, I don't actually know like what the animals are gonna be, but before I have them come in, I ch like I vet everyone and make sure they're healthy enough to ship. I didn't know this was coming. R I would have remembered this. It's so cool look. I've never seen a king snake look like this. I mean, maybe I just haven't looked at king snakes much, but this has to be rare, right? 
I would see a more because who wouldn't? Okay, I'm kind of just a, a yellow simp. I just really like the color yellow and it's pretty yellow. I'll be honest. Wow, and it's got these like red spots. I'd say hands, I'd say so far this is the coolest looking animal in, in this unboxing. I don't, what do you think? What, is there a cooler one? Let me know in the comments. That's a call to action. I know how to, how to do, uh, ooh, his eye, even his eyes like match. And he's just got this little, his tongue matches his spots, his eyes match his pattern, his pupils match the dots. This is, this is a cool king snake. I've done a handful of videos on king snakes as well. I did one on a little baby pink king snake that I unboxed, and I also have a Mexican black king snake. The variety of king snakes is just kind of insane. Even between just the naturally occurring species, whether it's a Mexican black and an Eastern and a California king, uh, it's a neat ver variety. I think king snakes are arguably a lot cooler than corns, and hopefully I wouldn't complain if they became more common. <laughs> Okay, you know the people that like make those big wooden sculptures? I, I would be a master at this point. <sighs> My arm is too close, I think. Look at this packet. We had a good streak of them not smelling so funky. <sighs> this one smells kind of like a controlled drug, which I only know the smell of because I drove past a dispensary in Washington, DC. I think it's just poop though, same thing. And it's a Halmahera Blue Tongue Skink, who really wants out of this bag. I like to quote in this email that says, I didn't physically sex him by pushing the hemipenes out. He just did it himself quite a few times. That doesn't, that, that makes me uncomfortable. Show me your hemipenes, boy. Show me your hemipenes. Oh, oh, okay, okay, I don't, you don't have to show me. I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, 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 okay. That was my phone. I think it is cracked. Ow. Now for the final small box of unboxing episode seven. Which do you prefer, katana or box cutter? This one's coming from the faraway land of South Carolina. It's a corn snake, spoiler alert, that escaped often and would get found by the family cats. They also said the day before shipping it to me, she got stuck under the water bowl and now has a, some sort of damage. Okay. I mean, like I go through the effort of like trying to see if the animal is pretty healthy and everything beforehand because I try not to work with the extremely sick ones nowadays, but sometimes people have issues like th the day they ship and they claim that, I'm not saying this person's lying, but I'm just saying it's common that people will t totally hide an issue, um, possibly even going as far as like photoshopping images because some just look pretty different. Oh wow, this is like actually a cool looking corn snake though. Okay, so they said the damage is by its neck. Yeah, it's actually, ooh, it's actually bleeding or was bleeding but on its side. What kind of water bowl? Were you using a razor blade water bottle? I'm not sure what kind of water bowl scratches the snake so bad that it bleeds, but at least it looks okay now. Uh, this is the kind of animal I'd keep in a more sterile enclosure. Cause even though for temporary animals, I oftentimes do just use paper towel. This is one where I would definitely use paper towel and not like a loose substrate just to make sure it can stay clean and nothing gets in the wound. Cause it doesn't look open, but I'd rather be safe about it. Pattern wise, it's cool. It's got a nice bright, like earthy brown and a bright yellow, which you know I like. From Pennsylvania, why are they sending me from Pennsylvania? Number three from Pennsylvania is, there's no information, no note, no nothing. I'll admit, I like getting the notes. It's fun to read them. Zoop. A paw python. Oh my gosh, I'm a YouTube thumbnail. That's how excited I am. Another ball python, whoa! Why would you, why would anyone own two normal ball pythons? No offense, but what's the point of that? <laughs> this one is very skinny and quite unhealthy. <laughs> uh, the little one is actually fine. Okay, maybe they, maybe they rescued him from someone else. Maybe they just really like normal ball pythons. I'm sure there's plenty of reasons. I just don't know why this one is so skinny. It's actually the skinniest animal we've gotten. And the other thing is it has a massive head so I think it's actually a lot skinnier than I even thought because its head looks twice the size as it should be based on the, the body. Ooh, I don't know what's wrong with this one. Um, let me get a look at the face. Its eyes, ooh. Okay, this one's not gonna be ready for a long time. The left eye is like, 
be, well, you see. I don't know what's happening there. The right eye has some wrinkles, probably from past stuck shed. Everything is kind of just wrong with this ball pipe. I don't hear a wheeze or anything, so I think it's just external issues and then being underweight. I'll need some work. And as much as I do like seeing the animals transform from pretty unhealthy to much healthier and ready to find a new home, it's kind of just best for me right now to focus on the ones that don't have to be here that long because there's just so many people that need to rehome their healthy animals and I decided to kind of prioritize those a bit more so that I can just kind of cycle through more, help more people, help more animals, and it's a lot more simple and it's a lot less expensive and I gotta cut down on expenses sometimes. But occasionally there are some that just kind of just slip through that I don't realize just how not too great they are. This one, however, doesn't look too bad. It's obviously much younger and a lot smaller, but its head is proportional to the rest of its body. And yeah, this one seems fine. I, I don't know why there's such a big contrast because they didn't give me any information. Final box. Final box. <laughs> Coming from California. I honestly find it really impressive that animals can get here so quickly. This is not a FedEx advertisement, and I should probably disclose I am a FedEx shareholder. I am always quite impressed at just how fast the system can be. Priority overnight, if you drop the animal off at 8.30 on the other side of the country, it still gets here within 14 hours, which is kind of crazy. And like I said, I have to keep the big boxes. I can't destroy these. <laughs> wow, they really taped this baby well. Ooh. Oh, I know why it smells like that. I recognize that smell from a certain little tortoise species. One, two, three, four. So two of these are packed in pillowcases because uh, there's only two bags. I did send additional bags, but they were in a different box and I guess they didn't arrive on time. And it's a bunch of Russian tortoises. Russian tortoises just always look like they've been beat up, <laughs> like literally. Sometimes their eyes just look kind of wrinkly and their, their bodies look kind of rough. Sometimes their shells will have little scuffs and scratches on them, but overall, they're just fine. They're very hardy animals and I think they're quite cute. When it comes to, when it comes to turtles and tortoises, uh, I think they're, they're really cool for one because they stay really small. This is just about adult size uh, compared to maybe a sulcata or a red foot that people will get and not realize that they just keep on growing and growing and growing, but he's done. Oh, hello, this is not a tortoise. I come in peace, okay. <laughs> okay, this bearded dragon is kind of overweight, better than underweight, but not quite as good as the right weight. Are you more calm? Yes, you're more calm. Oh, no. and that's gonna do it for unboxing. Episode seven with 30 animals, passing the 600 animal mark, 100 on video. So hopefully you enjoyed. There's been a lot happening and it takes a long time for some of these animals, which is why I don't do as many unboxing videos as I wish I could do. But on the bright side, these are another 30 that I can guarantee will go off to pretty cool homes. And if you want to be one of those homes, you can go to emeraldscales.com. Uh, of course, depending on when you're watching this, different animals might be available, but you can join the mailing list at the bottom of the site and I'll send you emails whenever there's new animals. Again, on Patreon, you can get early access to the animals before anyone else. You also get a discount, um, so that's, that's kind of cool, along with a bunch of other perks. If you want my hoodie or you want to get in a t-shirt, black or white, those are available in the description as well, but hopefully you enjoyed. You can check out the six previous unboxings and hopefully at some point there will be an eighth. So thanks for your support. This is kind of my flagship series of the channel. It's what really helps keeping everything running. So hopefully you enjoyed. I'm Alex and thanks for watching.